first of all, thank you so much, guys, for coming here. It's a Saturday, and I know, uh, you know, most of us want to party on a Saturday. But I would like to introduce myself. My name is Ayush Sharma. I'm 31 years of age, and I'm an aspiring actor. I hail from a small town in Himachal Pradesh called Mandi. The reason why I call myself an aspiring actor, because even after doing two feature films, and after being an assistant director for four years, I still can't understand the meaning of the word acting. It just eludes me. But when I was young, my mother used to tell me, it's always nice if you go out there to introduce yourself. It's always good if people should know who you are. But over the past couple of years, I find myself in a necessity to do that. Because on social media, I go by many identities. Some people call me Arpita's husband. Some people call me Ahil's father. But I'm most importantly, I am known as Salman Kajija. <laughs> so I'm here to talk about this topic called uh, From Rags to Riches on Social Media. The reason why I call them riches is because these days, your followers are more important than the knowledge you possess. And having a blue tick on your Instagram account is more important than having an Aadhaar card. <coughs> so, my journey with social media began with Facebook, okay, when I was in school. It was a good platform where, you know, you could interact with your school friends, but times were different. It was actually a time when poking someone on Facebook was actually considered cool. <coughs> Sorry, I have a bit of a throat infection today, <coughs> but I really wanted to come out there. So, while I was uh, on Facebook, you know, actually, yeah, coming back to the topic, I was really, in 2010, things were very different. I was struggling to be an actor. My journey has just begun. I graduated from an acting school with a CD in my hand. That CD had my graduation scene. It was a very important thing for you if you want to be an actor. And at that point of time, I had performed Mr. Bachchan's most iconic scene. But that CD is locked away in my locker because I don't want anybody to see that footage anymore. But back in the day, uh, when I was struggling, I used to take that CD and my portfolio and wait for hours in front of a casting director's office because I wanted him to notice me. And if he does like me, I can just show him all my stuff and maybe he auditions me for a small part in one film. But now, things are different. Now, when we are casting for a movie, we get an Instagram link which has photos, videos, and to check the acting metal of a person, then you have so many reels where you can judge if this person can act or not. But anyways, coming back to Facebook. My journey with Facebook ended the day my uncle, auntie, and my papa joined it. <clears throat> Suddenly, my home page was flooded with life lessons. And the worst part was, I was waking up to my family poking me, which was not fun. I'm sure even you guys don't like to be poked by a family. So my pursuit for the next platform began, and I stumbled upon Instagram, which back in the day was a platform for photographers. Now, my hobby is photography, so I joined in. But simultaneously, I also joined into another account, another social media platform called Twitter. Now, Twitter was for intellectual people. If you are important, you're somebody, you had to be on Twitter. Well, I was a nobody. So I called this phase the rags of social media. I had no followers on Instagram, I had no followers on Twitter, and life was beautiful. Because I could post any nonsense on my Instagram, and I could rant about anything under the sun on Twitter. I could talk about the weather, I could rant about the traffic in Mumbai, and I was a self-proclaimed critic. After watching a movie, I would just go and write a review of the film on Twitter ground. And trust me, nobody cared. Life was good. <clears throat> Until I got married. <laughs> the next day, after I got married, I woke up. My phone was pinging like never before. My Twitter was lit. My Instagram was on fire. I could see followers jumping in every moment. So I saw my phone. The riches had just begun. My followers were growing. So I opened my Twitter. I wanted to see what people are saying. I was very curious. First time people are going to talk about me. And the uh, first thing I see is that me and my wife are getting trolled for getting married out of a religion. I scrolled through and I realized some people are forming a perception about me. Some said I married my wife because I wanted the money. Some said I married her because I want to be an actor. 
But the best part of them all was, they said, I'm a 32-year-old man from Delhi who's a businessman. Trust me, I'm married for eight years. I'm still not 32, and I still can't find that business. But I was numb to all this conversation. I didn't know what hit me. So I spoke to my wife, obviously, because she belongs to a film family. I said, what is going on? And she didn't have any explanation. We couldn't really understand why there's a narrative being drawn for me without any information about me. My poor mother, she, during my wedding, she saw the social media and she got worried. She got worried about her son's image. She came to me and she's like, you know, I think you need to do something. Why don't you go and talk about a political legacy? Because that will at least quash some stories about you. Now what do I do? Do I come out, justify myself? Or do I just let it be? And I decided to be silent. But at that point in time, I didn't know that these stories are going to be with me for years and years to come. Some I've overcome over a period of time, but some, some are still there. I'm still Salman Gajija, by the way. <laughs> but uh, life had changed. The riches had come at a cost. I could no longer be myself on these platforms. Posting a lot of photography on Instagram made people believe I'm a photographer. Uh, for a, you know, I shoot pictures for a living. And Wish Good Morning on Twitter got me trolled. Because people said, my morning is ought to be good because I'm Salman Khan's brother-in-law. So yeah, from being a very active member of this digital community, I became a social media stalker. I went in a shell because I was scared of getting judged. I didn't want people to form any opinion about me. But see, this is the funny thing about social media. When I was facing a narrative which I could neither explain nor defend, when my babies were born, they were welcomed with very open arms. It was beautiful to see that people I don't know sending so much of love to these babies. The newest members of my family were being celebrated. I would, it, was, it was the beautiful thing, you know. People just sending in so much good wishes. I constantly keep telling my kids that you were born in a country with 1.3 billion population and you were noticed even before you open your eyes. Be grateful. But also know one thing, when you grow up, you need to leave a mark because there are going to be eyes on you all the time. But my love-hate relationship with social media didn't seem to end. While I was getting up for my first film, Love Yatri, the digital community was introduced to a new word. It was called nepotism. Yeah, I know, I know. I know, I know, I know. And coincidentally, at the same time, my movie was announced. Now I agree, I had just walked into it this time. Well, I suddenly realized that I'm a byproduct of nepotism. And to be honest, I didn't know the meaning of that word at that point in time. I spent hours of Google trying to understand what are the new charges that are levied against me. Now, I can't deny my association to a movie star was a very integral part to my debut. I can't do that. It's the truth. But I'm not a star kid. I'm just in the wrong place at the wrong time. That's what it is. Now, I'm associated to a film family, but I was not born in a film family. No, but in this situation, I am neither an outsider who struggled you know, out in, uh, in front of casting directors, and neither am I an insider. I am just in the middle of nowhere. So I hope you guys understand why my identity crises are there. But you know, the thing with social media is nothing is permanent. When my first song came out, Chogada, I hope you guys have heard it. Thank you. It was welcomed with a lot of love and appreciation. And suddenly I was, cloud, I was on cloud nine. I really enjoyed the love, the attention. But when my, movie review, when my movie released to bad reviews, suddenly all that confidence was shattered. I felt like I'm the biggest failure on planet Earth. My performance was being judged, and I was being reminded that I am responsible for this film tanking. People were nasty enough to tell me that I'm a wise dog, and I got rewarded by marrying her. Some people even went to an extent they're saying that this big superstar paid a huge dowry for getting her sister married. My confidence was shattered. I didn't know what happened to me. My eight-year-long journey to become an actor was ending right in front of my eyes. And can you believe it? It was ending few hours, few hours after my first movie release. 
My wife saw me crumbling under pressure. She didn't know what is happening. So she decided to take me to this theater called Gaty Galaxy in Mumbai. And she said, why don't we take people's reaction? I was very hesitant. I didn't want to face anyone. I didn't want to meet anyone. I thought everybody's going to laugh at me. So when I went to the theater, I opened the doors of the theater. And I was surprised. People were dancing on their chairs. And I didn't know what to believe. People seemed to be having a good time in the theater. And suddenly, when they, know, when they realized that I'm in the theater, the most beautiful thing ever happened. I got mobbed for the first time. The love was real. And those people with love were calling me Chogada boy. Now what do I believe? Do I believe what is in front of my eyes? Or do I believe the trolling that's happening on social media? I was confused. I didn't know if I should celebrate or I should sulk. But one thing is for sure, that the negativity kept on increasing. Every day, every morning, I was reminded that I'm a failure. Every morning, I was reminded that my movie tanked. Every day, I was reminded that I should not be an actor. I should go back to photography. I should just do nothing. Or maybe just go back and do a business that I was doing in Delhi. You know, all those perceptions were still there. Now, while my own personal journey with social media has been a roller coaster, I see this platform giving breaks to so, so many artists. Back in the day, you needed an investor to back your creativity. Today, if you're creative enough, you can sit at the comforts of your home and find your audience. If you're good in what you do, be it if you're a comedian, you're an actor, you're a dancer, you're a chef, or whatever you are, you can find your reach. Nowadays, when we are casting movies, we are also seeing a person's caliber as an actor, but we are also seeing their social media followers. On social media these days, very important issues are being discussed. You know, the world is coming closer. Now while we are sitting here, we all know what's happening in Iran. The call for Black Lives Matter is not only voiced in America, but all over the world. So clearly, this platform is a very important tool if we use it right. But my problem with social media is that it creates a huge disparity between reality and perception. Look at a friend's vacation photos, well curated content that come on these platforms. And we stop spending time with our own family. We want to live their lives. We look at those perfect bodies on Instagram and we start finding faults in ourselves. We think we are imperfect. Now these days, I've been praised a lot for my transformation. People say I have a six-pack body. But to be honest, I don't look like that for the most part of my year. Actors do work very hard to look a certain way, to get into a character. But that is four to six months of training that comes down to one day of shoot, one day. And that one day, you're in your peak condition, which is supplemented by the lights that are placed for you, it is supplemented by the camera that is placed at a certain angle to make you look larger than life. And also there is makeup to enhance you. Now that's a reality. If you see me, what I was on screen and what I'm in real life, it's a different ball game altogether. But I see a lot of people who are not in the field of acting going on crazy diets, crazy diets, unhealthy diets, because they think that will make them look attractive, that makes them look, that will make them more confident. And I've come to realize that social media has changed the perception of beauty. There's a subconscious insecurity that's developing in everyone. Am I perfect? Do I look so good? Do I dress well? Am I, am I confident? Am I not? You're always presenting the best of ourselves on these platforms. My wife, she's constantly trolled for being overweight. She's a constant target that being a celebrity, she should not be so fat or she should dress a certain way. And she's dark in color. Every time a picture comes live, people are quick to remind that she's dark in color. And this also comes to the terms that today, beauty is no longer internal. Nobody wants to know how beautiful you are as a human being. But people want to see you beautiful externally. But I'm proud of my wife. Because she's comfortable in her own skin. She's proud of who she is. And behind closed doors, she tells me, I am not a celebrity. I've done nothing to be a celebrity. And I'm never going to be in front of the camera. So I am going to be who I am. I'm going to live my life the way I'm going to live my life. And I respect that. Now, 
see what's happening. We are no longer in the moment. We go to a nice rock concert, we pay for the tickets, we don't enjoy it with our eyes. We see phones, phones. We are seeing the whole performance through a screen because we want to record it. We want to share it with our friends. We want to show off to people that, look, look at me, I went to this show. Recently, I was doing a show in Dubai. I was performing a Dabang tour and I, all I could see was people with their phones. People with their phones. They're not enjoying the performance. They're just pointing the phones at you because they want to record everything. Now see what happens. We go to a restaurant. We order food. Rather than eating the food, we are taking pictures of the food. Just goddamn eat the food. You know? See the social media. These platforms have an algorithm inside them. They basically serve you what you like. Now just imagine if you're going to eat one cuisine that you like and you don't explore any other cuisines, how do you know what the world has to offer you? Aren't you stagnating your growth, your mental growth? Aren't you restricting horizons from growth? I see a lot of herd mentality on these platforms where a popular notion is being, is being agreed upon. But nobody wants to know the other side of the story. My personal opinion is that never judge a news article by the headline. It's more dangerous. Read the whole piece, then form an opinion. But I need, nowadays I find people making quick judgments. Just, this is popular, I agree to it. But the thing that happened is, there was a time in me when I stopped thinking what other people think of me. I realized that my dreams are too big to be taken away by the opinions of others. I, I'm open to all the criticism about my work on these platforms, but I don't give the right to anybody to take my dream away. I'm going to fight for it because I was the one who dreamt it. I dreamt of being a movie actor. I wanted to be here so bad. I'm not going to crumble under the pressure of what people think of me. And when my change happened, I started finding myself. I started finding the riches of this platform. Because I realized one thing, these are just opinions. And these opinions are always subject to change. The change in me was met with what I wanted, the ch what the change I wanted for, from others. Rather than looking at digital validation, I started looking at personal happiness. My second movie opened up to great reviews. And this Friday was completely a different story. I was praised for my acting work. It was amazing to wake up to people acting your scenes and putting it on these social media platforms and sending it to you, saying, see, I'm enacting your character. So in this whole journey, I realized one thing. Never let the hate go to your heart and never let the love go to your head. Because in the end of the day, these riches are neither permanent nor real. By the way, I found myself with a new identity. Nowadays, people who don't know my name call me Rahulia Bhai. And I also go by another identity called Pune Ganaya Bhai. So thank you so much, Ted, for having me over. And thank you all for getting me to Pune to talk about all these things. Thank you. Thank you.